Hello everybody. Just wanted to take a minute and uh, show you guys how to do some ornamental work with purely rhino. I know a lot of people use um, T-splines for doing ornamental stuff. I've never had much luck with, I've never been happy with the results of using T-splines. So just wanted to share my method for doing most of my ornamental work. Um, I've got some base curves laid out here and the first thing I would do is come over and use um, the sketch command and I have a Wacom and I would just draw it out and then after that I'd come back in and clean these up <clears throat> rebuild them to uh, a good degree with a, a good number of points um, and then do some minor point editing and be done or I do it in Illustrator and just bring it in but I have my base curves laid out here and I'm gonna make a little floor -de -lis and show you guys how I do it. Um, I have a, a set of profile curves that I store over here to the side and I'm going to start with this center section here and for that I would like to use this kind of uh, profile curve. So what I'm going to do is say orient and make sure it's copy and scale 3D and let me turn project off here and grab this point on that point and when I orient myself over here just grab that endpoint to that endpoint and that's it I'm done um, if I want to control the height at different points along here I would lay out one at every place that I want to control the height but I'm going to show you a, um, another way of controlling the height when I get done with cage editing so just do a sweep to grab this rail this rail and that profile and oh. I'm just going to do a sweep to grabbing this rail that rail and that profile and if I can get my command window up here I'm just going to tell it okay it's pretty high in the center so what I'm going to do is just a simple cage edit. And I'm going to tell it a bounding box, world, the default degree and control points is fine for what I'm doing. And now I can go to evening out the highs and the lows a little bit. So <clears throat> my preferred way of doing this is with selection filters. Just telling it control points only, that way I can grab these guys. And then if you don't have a hotkey set up to relocate the gumball, I really suggest you do that because I can just call relocate gumball and then boom, I move it right here to the corner so I can scale from the bottom. I'm just going to bring this in a little bit until it's okay. And that's looking pretty good. If I want just the top layer, grab these points, relocate gumball. And where's scale? I'm just going to move that down. can't scale it because I only have one row selected. And now my highs and lows are a little bit more even now. And I'm happy with the shape of that, so I'm going to move on to the next part of this. Turn my selection filter back off. Delete that. And I'm just going to hide this for now. Okay, next I'm going to work on the side of the floor de -lis. And for this, I want to use this profile curve. So again, I'm going to say orient, grab this guy, this point, to this point, and I'm going to switch over to top view just to lay this out a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to grab here, and for this one, I'm going to lay out more than just one. A, I want to be able to control the height through the curves this time, and B, uh, picking it like this, I have better control over how this sweep to is going to place the ISO curves in the U. Um, if you let it do it itself, it's going to space them pretty evenly and then jam them up all, all at the end. So I'm going to do it by hand. That looks about right. Grab over here.
Okay. Now I've got those. Same thing. Sweep two. And grab the first rail and the second rail. And I'm going to start and end with a point on this one. Point. Grab this one. This one. This one. And I'm grabbing them all on the same edge against the same rail. And then end it with a point as well. And that's going to give me that sweep. And I'm just going to tell it OK. And look at it. And I used scale 3D because if you don't do that, sweep 2 is not going to blend them as nicely as I would like. I want them to all have a uniform uh, scale as they go from little to big and then back down to little. I'm not happy with the height, and I'm going to adjust that in just a second. We can look at it with the other one and see that this is much higher than the one in the middle. So in the first one, I just used cage editing on the surface itself, but I also have history turned on. So let me hide this for a second and grab all of these guys. Oops, grab that curve. I'm going to say cage edit, bounding box, world, default number of control points, and let's go. Okay, because I have history turned on, I can scale these guys as a group, and history is going to update, update my resulting surface. Why would I do it this way over the way I just showed you? Because when you cage edit a surface, it makes that surface a lot more complex. Cage editing the control points is going to rebuild the surface with the minimal number of control points. So let me turn my selection filters back on. I'm going to grab these guys move my gumball down here to the corner. And I'm going to bring the whole thing down to about there. And you can see it was warning me that history broke because I had history turned on for when I did the orient, when I oriented that profile curve uh, to my two rails. Now that gives me about the right height that I want, but I would like it to start a little shallower over here on this side uh, where it meets up with the center of the floor delay. So that's simple to do. Just bring that over here. Move my gumball. Shrink that down. Still not quite enough, so I'm going to grab the, the next row over. Relocate my gumball. Scale that down. And when I turn on shaded mode here, I'm pretty happy with that. I might do some more tweaking up here in the corner, but you can see what I'm doing. Notice the ISO curve density of the surface that I cage edited versus the cage editing of the control points. So if you want to cage edit the, the curves, um, use more of them so you have more control over that scaling. If you just want to cage edit the surface and get a heavier surface, you just need one at every place that you you could use several different profile curves, so you just use one at each transition uh, that you want to have. Let me turn back to my new favorite display mode and disable my selection filters. Now from here, I would mirror this around, mirror that to the other side, grab all three of these, switch to another C-plane, mirror those to the bottom, and then I would select all these surfaces, join them up. And I just broke history by doing that, but that's okay. Um, I've got this set to show naked edges with purple lines and edges with black. So the only thing I need to do to finish this is cap it. And now we have three solid polysurfs. The last thing I would want to do is put the little uh, bail on here in the center. So for that, I'm going to grab, let me switch my C plane back. For that, I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to say Orient, Copy, Scale 3D, from there to there. And I'm going to grab these endpoints, end. Make sure that's, oh, Space Mouse doesn't know how to zoom when you don't have the proper thing selected. That end, that end. Okay. So let me grab these polysurfs and just hide them for the time being. 
All right, I'm gonna take this and it's right there on the corner. And I'm just gonna rotate it around 90 degrees. And it's laying down. And do the same thing here, even though I probably should have mirrored it. Okay. So now I've got the, oh, that one I picked the wrong uh, intersection with. So I'm gonna delete it and use mirror after all put that on the other side. Now these two lines are just uh, degree one, two control point lines. I'm gonna rebuild them and make them into three, degree three with four control points and turn the control points on. I'm gonna grab these guys in the center, bring them up, scale them out. And I'm pretty happy with the shape of that. So now all I have to do is a sweep two, first rail, second rail, profile one, profile two. Okay, and I've now made that band. Let's turn on our hidden items, and that looks like it's, that looks pretty good. Mirror that to the bottom. Join. cap. Nope. And now I have a solid object. This will all boolean up very easily. Um, the only thing you have to kind of worry about is how how complex you make this surface in the middle, but it's got a nice clean edge on it. I'm not worried about it. That will uh, boolean nicely. And we can turn on a rendered view to, to see how it looks. And that looks pretty good. Quick, easy, nothing but Rhino. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to do uh, a very similar thing, but with VSR shape modeling. And VSR shape modeling is going to allow me to have much uh, more fluid intersections like the ones that you would get out of T-splines. Um, thanks for watching, and make sure you head over to 3D CAD Jewelry to stay up to date on all the latest CAD CAM technologies.